IBM announces quantum computing breakthroughs at CES. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Jeff Welser, Vice President, IBM Research Almaden, Pacific Rim Labs, and Exploratory Science. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome. Thank you. So what are the research areas you and your teams focus on at IBM Research? Uh, we have a fairly broad portfolio, really all focused on the future of computing. So we're looking at everything from hardware and software to advance high performance computing, to advance uh, AI technologies, as well as quantum computing. On the quantum computing front, IBM just announced uh, achieving a significant scientific milestone. Explain the quantum volume and the milestone that you had just announced. Yeah, so we started back in quantum computing in May 2016 when we put out the first quantum computer on the cloud. And one of the things we said we were going to do was double the quantum volume every year. And quantum volume is a measure of how much power a quantum system actually has. So you can't just count qubits. You've got to think about the number of qubits you've got, but also the error rate, the coherence time, the crosstalk, all the ways you can actually utilize those qubits to do computation. So we started off at a quantum volume of four. We hit eight. 16 and this year we're like we're very proud to announce that we've hit 32 so for our fourth time we have managed to double every year we hope to see that go forward going forward as well also in the quantum domain uh, ibm researched uh, another milestone uh, with participation with ibm q network tell us about that yeah, so we're very excited to say we now have over 100 members in our Q network, our IBM Q network. And these are really a very broad set of groups. Uh, we have Fortune 500 companies. A Delta just joined as our first airline. Anthem just joined as our first insurance company. We also have many universities, Georgia Tech, uh, North Carolina State's a hub, a Stanford University just joined, as well as national labs. Los Alamos is just joining up with us as well. And really the idea here is to try to get a very broad set of folks using the systems. I'm also excited to say we had about another half dozen startups joining. We'll use our hardware to advance the process as well. You've mentioned a number of organizations who are participating, including startups. Uh, you've, you've got a quite enterprise level all the way down to, I, I'm imagining, a much smaller uh, startup organization. So for those involved in the IBM Q network, what benefits will doubling the quantum volume metric deliver and when might they see them? Yeah, so I, 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 almost immediately. So really what it allows you to do is do larger problems. I mean, right now we really are at a stage in quantum computing where most of the problems we're doing are really proof of concept. You know, you could still do them on a classical system because our systems aren't big enough yet, but you're proving out that it works. So then when the quantum volume gets large enough, you'll be able to do a problem on that quantum computer you could never do on any classical system. So it's important to us that you keep doubling that quantum volume because we hope to reach a point sometime in the 2020s when we are actually having a, a quantum advantage where it's something you can do on the quantum system you could not do uh, or could not do nearly as well on a, on a classical system. Dr. Jeff Welser, Vice President, IBM Research Almaden, Pacific Rim Labs and Exploratory Science. Thanks so much for joining and talking about your announcement. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Best way is to check us out on Twitter. Check out IBM Research or myself, Jeff Welser, Twitter. Thanks again, Jeff. And you can find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.